Hello. So we've talked about routes, controllers, views, and the basics of what's in a view. And the, we know that basic, basically we're going to use this view to produce HTML back to the user. Well, and we know the user can do these get requests. That's great. They're saying, please send me something back. That's easy. But they are also going to be able to make post and patch and delete requests. And those requests have to be created with a form. And the idea of the form is, oh, I'm going to, to make a request to the website, but I'm also going to send along some data, something so that you can actually do something uh, and do something interactive, respond to my input. Um, all right. So uh, now I, I got to admit, I feel kind of stupid for years when people would talk about forms and forms. I was like, why are they called forms? And the reality was eventually, ah, it's because it's supposed to be modeled like you could make a form on a piece of paper. And a form on a piece of paper, you know, says, please fill in your name here. And there's a blank spot and you put in your name, put in your phone number, whatever. That is a form and you would fill out the form. Uh, so I, I was clueless. I'm like, why are they called forms? Like, why aren't they called like input system device or whatever? I don't know. Like, but that's why they're called forms is because the idea is you're going to generate something that might look like a form. But in a lot of cases, you're just going to use it as a mechanism to collect some input. You don't think about it like a form. It doesn't may not even be styled like a form. It's just like you wanted them to type something in and get the get the get what they typed in. But yes, it all goes under it. We have to use the mechanism of an HTML form to get this input from the user. All right. So what's the basic uh, structure? Um, now we're going to look at HTML forms, but you are never going to craft an HTML form by hand. You're always going to use Rails and its methods to craft an HTML form for you. But I find it really useful to have some basic understanding of the HTML form because you're going to be using code to generate HTML form that is then used in the process to send you back data and stuff. So in debugging what you're doing, it can help to be able to look at the generated HTML and you do that again, you go and you view the source of the page that you've generated and it's got an HTML form on it and you can go, oh, I see what Rails did. Now I see why this isn't working and you can debug it. But if you can't look at the HTML and read it, you can be lost and not, not have a, a good insight into to how things are working. So let's spend a little bit of time to see what these things really are. So, you know, it's HTML, it's got a tag. And the big thing is we're going to specify an action. And the action is always to some URL or path. Paths can be relative, uh, just like they are when you're dealing with the Unix system. You can have a relative path or you can have an absolute path. An absolute path is the full URL starting with HTTP, okay? Um, the relative paths are with respect to where the user currently is on the website and you can specify paths relative to it. Um, and again, just like um, uh, paths in Unix, we can also talk about starting at the root. And that, that, would, you, that could be a uh, full path, an absolute path, but it wouldn't include the host name. So we would start at slash. So slash again is the start of everything and we can have stuff after it. But yeah, you can do stuff that's like, you know, in URLs or these actions, you can use dot dot and a single dot, just like you do in Unix. All of this was born out of Unix and so it copies it. But again, you aren't going to craft these URLs by hand and these forms by hand. Just know that this is what's behind the, the scenes, sort of behind the curtain. And then you specify a method. And so for example, the most common method would be a post. Um, you can actually make this a get, um, so it can 
be a get. And if you do this, then the parameters of the form are put on the query string. So you would be doing, you would end up, if you make this a get request, you would get this URL and any of the data that's in the form would be appended to that URL as a query string, which is a handy little thing to know. All right. Okay. Um, now inside of here, you're going to, uh, this is just a comment. This is not HTML. You're going to place various tags inside the form or input fields, you know, some sort of a submit button, you know, and other formatting. And you can put all sorts of HTML in here, all sorts of text and stuff. All right, so, um, I think there's two T's. Anyway, so you can do all sorts of stuff in there. And then, of course, you in HTML, you always close your tags. All right. And so this would be a form. And we have to look at what we're going to actually put in there. And so, yes, you can this you can put in other HTML tags. You know, you can use your paragraph tag, a uh, div, an ordered list, so forth and so on. Um, anything to help organize uh, the form and make it look nice for the user to use. All right, so let's look at some selected input types that we can have in an HTML form. There's all sorts of them. All right, so. Selected means I'm not showing you everything. There's too much to in HTML to go over at all. Uh, that's why we have reference manuals. That's why we have Google. Like go look, go look stuff up. You're like, I want to know how to do this. Well, you'll you'll. There's lots of guides to how to do things, um, but some of them uh, selected input types, ones that we find ourselves using a fair amount are checkboxes, uh, radio buttons. So checkboxes and radio buttons are highly related to each other. Uh, you know, a, you can have a text field input. That's a really common one to use. You can have a hidden input tag, okay? And so not for the hidden input tag, nothing shows up to the user, but you do have a name and value pair there that when the form is submitted, show up and are given to you as parameters. So it's kind of a way to say, you know, when I generated this form, I know that I also want to be given this information, but the user doesn't need to tell me that. Um, I'm going to put it in the form and when they submit it, I'll get that. And it's like, it's like leaving a little note for yourself. Um, use it wisely. Don't use it in a way that's going to break the restful nature of your, your web design, um, but it can be really helpful and handy sometimes. It's with the hidden tags, which is the way that Rails uh, is able to use a form that has a method of post and to know that it's actually a delete or to know that it's actually a patch. They include a little hidden input field, uh, input tag, and it's hidden and it includes and it says, by the way, this is really a delete or this is really a patch. Okay. And then that comes in and Rails goes, oh, I see that. It's really a delete. Or it's not just a post, it's not a post. All right. Um, you can have uh, a submit tag. You can have a reset one. Reset uh, changes all the fields back to the way they started. In other words, if you want to try over again. 
Uh, so yeah, so here's some some notes about these. I already said it, but I'll write it out again. Reset is a button to clear fields in the form. I'll submit. This is the button you click to sends the form and data to the action URL. So, um, yep, time to collect it all and send it in. And I already mentioned hidden, which is uh, allows you to include data not shown to user. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the checkbox and radio buttons. These tend to be uh, tricky ones. All right, so check boxes are, you know, we'll have some text and we'll have a little box, usually some text and a little box and some text and a little box. And when a user says, oh yeah, they can check multiple check boxes. Okay. There's a big issue though with them in using these is that only the checked inputs are submitted. So what we would really like to see is something that's like option one, two, and three or whatever. And, oh, it's been set to true. It's been set to false. It's been set to true. But that's not the way it works. Um, we'll only get these values that have been checked. This one that's not been checked, nothing will be generated and actually sent as part of the form for it. Um, so you have no notion that they didn't check this thing. You have to know what was in the form or know what these sorts of things are to know. Oh, these are the ones that were set true. Everything else was left not checked. And so I, and I know what those are. And so therefore they're not checked. So it's a, it's a tricky way to, to, to operate. Um, radio buttons. So radio buttons are, again, you're going to see some text and you're going to see some circles. And you can have them start off where none of them are selected. But if, if a user does select one of these, all right, that's fine. But if a user selects another one, it causes the other one to not be selected anymore. All right. Uh, so this behavior, you push one and the other ones get unselected. You push another one. Oh, only, you can only get one of them selected at a time. These are called radio buttons because if you've ever had a chance to be in a car uh, with an analog old car radio, uh, they'll, you'll see that they have buttons you may maybe you've seen this in an old-fashioned diner or something as well anyways so you push a button and it's for a preset station and again it's like radios you have now that are digital but it was mechanical and you push it and the button stays in and if there and the other station that you had as a pre-selected button that was pushed in pops out okay so the idea was only one of the radio buttons or only one of the buttons can be pushed in at a time if you push any button in it pops out the other button hence the notion the terminology radio buttons um so um yeah uh okay so as i said it's like the buttons on an old radio you push one the others go off um again Big thing is if none are selected, 
nothing is submitted. Same thing happens with the checkboxes here. So they're very similar in that regard. Now Rails has instructions and methods for when working with checkboxes and radio buttons that if you build the form correctly using the Rails tools, they'll include something that's hidden, one of these hidden inputs to actually allow you to know that nothing was selected. All right, but if you don't follow the instructions and everything correctly, you'll get nothing and you won't know and it's very hard to code. Um, so it's really um, important to read the directions carefully when working with Rails with this. All right. Um, let's look at a much more common scenario for us is the pairing of a label and a text input tag. Okay. So what we're often going to see is a pattern uh, where we have a label tag and we for our label tag we say it's for something um, so let's say I say this is for the title and then we put some text to display so for example I want to say that this is a label where I'm looking for the title and then this is the end of the label tag. So this is one of these tags that's kind of like an anchor tag. An anchor tag is what's used to make a link where we specify stuff and then we have text that gets displayed and is known to be associated with the label tag. Um, and then we end the tag. Um, it doesn't get styled in any special way, but it, it does. It, there is something really special about it that I'll say in a moment. Uh, when we have an input tag and then we have lots of different input tag types and so for example one of them is to have it be a text input type so we will expect the user to type something now we can give it an ID we need to give it the ID title these IDs become, are used for uniquely identifying a tag on, in your HTML. Uh, and then we can give it a name. And let's say I name it a uh, book underscore title here. All right. And so that's the full input tag. Um, it's it's a tag on its own. It doesn't have a beginning and an end to it. Now, this for and this ID, if these are the same, okay, one of the things that's really interesting about this is that clicking on the label basically selects what is in an input tag. And this becomes really handy when our input tag type is like, button, a uh, radio button, um, or a checkbox, those things are really small to, to get with your mouse and just hit. If you put a label tied to them, then when you click the text, it will actually also select the checkbox or the radio button. You don't actually have to hit the actual checkbox or the actual radio button. And so this can be a really nice accessibility feature. Not everyone actually has the ability to manipulate a mouse really finely and just hit those tiny little inputs. If you make it so that the label is tied together, then they can actually click on this text and select a checkbox or select a uh, radio button. Now this is for uh, text input type. Um, all right, and so what we'll see when this displays is we'll see a title and then we'll have a box next to it which allows us to type in some text, okay? This name, all right, this name is what goes with the params. So when we hit the sub form submit, this name becomes the name of the name value pair the data that the user types in becomes the value. And so this is our way of specifying, oh, when I get the form and I wanna know what they typed into my text field here, I will go 
ask the params hash for the book title and the value will be what the user typed in. All right, um, fabulous. So that's the basics of HTML forms and I'll continue in a moment with forms in Rails.